Hello, and welcome to Knit Cheek, a podcast where I like to talk about all of the stuff that I'm knitting and crocheting, quilting, and spinning. So if I haven't talked about the last two yet on this channel, um, I'm fairly new to YouTube. My name is Natalie, and I'm the cheek behind Knit Cheek, and I'm coming to you from Southern California, and I'm very hot. <laughs> um, it is 80 degrees, and um, it's warm. It's warm today, but I am wearing my finished cardigan because it's finished and I have to wear it. So we are going to power through that. <sighs> well, welcome. Welcome to my last video that I'm going to be posting before I go on a trip abroad. If you're new to this channel, I am going on a trip to Italy for two months. I'm going to be woofing in Italy, which is where you work on a farm um, in exchange for room and board. I did it in my early 20s and I'm excited to do it in my mid 30s. <laughs> um, so yeah, my upcoming trip, I leave Sunday, it's Thursday. So this is definitely the last video and it'll be the last video for two months. I will still be sharing my adventure, maybe through YouTube shorts, I'm not quite sure yet. Um, for sure on TikTok and maybe Instagram. I'm knit cheek all over the place. So if you want to follow along there, you can. I, I think I want to post YouTube shorts. I'm just not sure um, what I'll be able to do basically from my phone, but I will try to figure out ways to share that adventure online somehow. I don't know how frequently either, but we'll see. I'll be here um, if you want to follow along I and see what I come up with. So Today is a regular podcast where I'm going to just talk about my finished objects, my works and progresses, and works and progresses? All my works and, yeah, works and progresses and my acquisitions or my plans. And this, on this episode, that's going to be what I plan to knit on my trip to Italy. Yeah, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the trip. I leave Sunday. I come back mid-June. Um, I had someone ask me where in Italy I was going. We are visiting Florence. I have some family in Florence we're going to visit. And then our first farm is north of Florence, um, near, oh God, let me see, <laughs> the Italian names. Actually, let me see here. Let me pull out a map. Um, can I pull out a map? Is there not? Okay. So the first farm is in the region of Emilia, Romagana, and San Marino. It's north of Tuscany. Um, and that farm we'll be staying at for two weeks. Our second farm is actually, I don't know actually what region it's in. It's kind of in between Rome and Naples, um, near some national parks. And so that's what drew us to that farm. And then the third farm we're gonna stay at is a farm in Sicily. And um, Joey, Mr. Cheek, my partner, is actually, his family immigrated from Sicily over 100 years ago. So we'd like to go visit where they immigrated from and hopefully see one of his relatives' gravestones if we can find it at the cemetery that they were buried at. So let me show you my stack of travel books because it's unhinged. It's unhinged. So to be fair, I think almost all of these except for one, which I think the one I bought at a thrift store are from thrift books. <laughs> so this is my stack of travel Italy books. I've made my way through most of them. I think I'm gonna bring the Sicily book with me because that's the last place we're going. So I can read that one um, when we're there. I also have another one that I left at my friend's house. But yeah, I, these are all from Thrift Books. Um, that's a website that sells uh, used books online. And I, I want to say average was $5. I mean, obviously that added up here. <laughs> so we went to Hawaii last year. And at the Airbnb we were staying at, they had a travel guidebook. And I just read through it and thoroughly enjoyed Ex that experience and then so we were we went to Kauai first and then we went to Oahu and I actually went to Barnes and Nobles to buy a travel book about Oahu because I was like oh I need a travel book so 
I like travel books. I like reading through them. You can totally just get them from your library. You don't have to buy them. I'm probably not, I'm definitely not going to bring this stack with me. Just the one book, maybe. I don't know where I was going off with this. So a thing about me is that I'm actually a very nervous flyer to the point of where I went 10 years without getting on an airplane because I'm pretty, I'm pretty scared of flying. <laughs> so last year was the first time I've gotten on an airplane in over 10 years. We went to Hawaii and I actually did some exposure therapy and sat down, well, sat on Zoom with a counselor. My expectations for that was like, oh, I'm going to get on a plane and I'm never going to be scared again. And I'm going to like, just be one of those people who's so relaxed. And at the end of it, I was like, oh, that's never going to happen. That fear is never going to go away, but I'm going to overcome it. And I'm going to, I'm going to do the thing of getting on an airplane because I want to travel and I want to go places, but I'm still very afraid of flying. I used to have nightmares about flying, um, which I don't have anymore. Thank God, because I leave in three days and I, I'm, I'm fine. I will be scared. I will be nervous, but I'll be fine. <laughs> so that tangent about flying and you know sometimes you you think there's unreasonable expectations especially when you're trying to alter something about yourself that you just can't like I'm not going to ever not be afraid of flying and really it's instinctual if you think about that some people are just afraid to fly and I'm never going to be able to psych myself out of that my dad is actually an airplane mechanic so you think that I wouldn't be afraid of flying after being explained to how the airplanes work over and over again and how many there are in the sky at one time. I'm aware of these things. I'm, I'm aware that it's very unlikely, but I, I cannot change the fact that my body reacts to my fear of flying with anxiety. So I have been very anxious. Um, I think also just about leaving the country for two months, but I've been pretty anxious and I have not been able to read much lately. And I'm a pretty avid reader. I, I don't know. I read a lot of books. I read a lot of audiobooks, and I have not been able to sit down and listen or do whatever I do while listening to audiobooks recently. So I've been watching YouTube, or I have also been trying to learn Italian with my Pimsleur app that I use um, in the background. It's kind of a cool app because you can kind of listen to it while doing other things. So that's what I've been doing with my time. Well. We've come to the point of where I've run out of things to talk about, and now I need to talk about the finished item that I am wearing, and that is the Ariana cardigan. It is a, let me get up so I can show you. It is a granny square cardigan. This is uh, by Amy Christoffers. It is a free pattern. Um, I think it was made for a Baroku yarn. I could probably just shimmy my way around here. <laughs> I'll also insert some pictures that I took after I finished this cardigan, which was also a very hot day where I took these pictures. Um, so what do I have to say about this? It was an experience. Oh, I should tell you when, I don't think I wrote down when I finished it, but I want to say that this cardigan took me two months, one month to do all the granny squares. It was like exactly a month. And then a month to, was it a month? Yeah, it was a month because it's April, a month to, um, to join as I go and then do the ribbing. I think there was a little bit more downtime in that month, like where I didn't, I wasn't working on it because that shouldn't have taken a month, but it did. But the, this cardigan took me two months to make. Um, I did the granny squares in kind of like a factory line where I would do 10 granny squares at a time, each color round, and then I would move on to the next color round and then the next color round for all 10 of them. So at the end, I would have 10 finished ones at the same time. There were also half granny squares and a couple of quarter granny squares here at the, at the corners. The buttons are from Joann's. They're just plastic buttons that matched pretty well. What else do I have to say about this cardigan? It is actually smaller than what I was expecting it to fit. From the pictures, it looked really oversized, which it is. It's, it's, it's got room. It's by no means tight but I don't know why I was expecting it to be bigger. So I made a modification. I copied, it's a Sarah's podcast. She um, modified. So in the original pattern, it goes like this. Eep. Sorry, that was really annoying sound. So I'm gonna, let me redo that. In the original cardigan, um, the pattern connects here and it gives you more space in this armpit. 
which I can definitely see why they add to this to this cardigan because there's not a lot of um, like I don't think I could wear something underneath of this and be comfortable. Whereas if I had done it to the original pattern, I would have been able to. So keep that in mind if you're thinking about making this cardigan and if you want to make that modification or not. It wasn't the easiest modification to do just because this is my first time. This is only my third crochet project and this is definitely my first uh, connect as you go, which was really intuitive until about here. And then, and then I was, I was confused a little bit about how to add the squares to make the sleeves. I think it took me about one evening of sitting down and rereading and rereading the pattern until I figured it out because I had modified it too. So I couldn't go by the pattern, but I think even if I didn't modify it, that part was kind of not confusing, but it just took me a moment to grasp how I was going to do that. I really loved the, um, join as you go. You can kind of see the side. Okay. So. When you join as you go, you end up with gaps in between where you connect the two granny squares and you can't see them anywhere except for where it like pulls you like where you're pulling that weight. And because my arm is kind of pulling this side of the cardigan down, I have a computer back there that I'm near sharing. If you're wondering why I'm looking over there, it's helping me point to where I need to point. Um, so yeah, it does kind of gape in some areas, which I can go and figure out what areas those are and then just seam those granny squares a bit better. I was wearing this with a t-shirt the other day and I noticed it more because the white t-shirt was underneath of it. So that's just something in, to keep in mind if you know if you decide to um, seam it or to go along with it just standing like this or go along with the cardigan instructions and join as you go. Um, it's a Sarah's podcast, which is kind of, yeah, it was my inspiration for making this cardigan. That's the first time I'd heard about it. Um, she didn't join as you go. She just seemed it. So that's definitely something that you can do. Although I really enjoyed the crochet as you go um, portion of it. I think that I wouldn't have enjoyed seaming it. So I'm glad that I figured it out. I don't, I don't think I would be done if I had to seam all the, the granny squares together. And then picking up the ribbing, I did. So these are my cuffs. I did initially knit the ribbing too long as to pattern. And then I decided I wanted it a little bit shorter. So I ripped actually, well, I decided that after I had done the neck band, which isn't true. So what happened was I had finished the cardigan and the bind off for the neck band was too tight because I bound off in pattern. So I had to undo that bind off. And I was thinking, well, I should really undo the bottom ribbing bind off, which meant I had to redo the neck bands after a little bit of thought, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do that. This is worsted weight yarn, it's not gonna take that long. So I ripped out the neck band and then I ripped back the ribbing until the length that I wanted it to be for the bottom ribbing. And then cast that off with a stretchier cast off. And that I used a YouTube tutorial, which I can include in the bottom because I don't remember. If I saw her face, I remember who it was, but I don't, I don't remember her name. And then I re-picked up the neck band and then knit that and then used that stretchy it's not super stretchy, but it's stretchy. What was I going with that? That's stretchy cast off. I also did a technique that um, helps to create a more square edge at the bottom here. Okay, so this is the bottom. I'm doing some sort of weird squat here. <laughs> I did a technique that I found on YouTube where you cast on um, another stitch past where you pick up so that it rolls and it gives you a really nice straight um, end to your, your bottom ribbing. So I didn't do that the first time and the edging kind of like curled and, and it wasn't straight. So I'll include that YouTube video too because that was really helpful. I knit this, I crocheted and knit this out of Knitting for Olive's Heavy Merino yarn, which is heavy. <laughs> it's a worsted weight yarn. Um, or at least it claims to be, and it's a woolly yarn, like it's wool. It's 100% wool and it feels like wool. It's, it's a heavy cardigan, but it's very comfortable. I think that I would tend to wear this over tank tops or like light t-shirts just because of how heavy it is. The, the holes do make it breathable, but it's still warm because you get enough of that friction. I mean, if it was too cold, it would be cold because of the holes, but so it's kind of a cardigan where the perfect, maybe like a summer night. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> what else do I have to say about it? So yeah, it's heavy. It's got ease. It, I like it a lot. The first cardigan of the year, it's not my first cardigan ever. I love the colors. I did wear it out. My local yarn store does something called Yarno. Um, and that is, it's like a game that they play throughout the year. And it's, it's just like bingo, but it's for yarn projects. And you can cross out two of your squares per month. And so I wore it to the yarn store to get my square crossed off for uh, a finished sweater. I was going to do crochet and she's like, you should do sweater because sweaters take longer. And I was like, you're right, I should. Um, and anyone can participate in this uh, yarn out game online if you go to their website, which I'll include in the description bar as well. It looks like this. I keep mine in a little thing here because, you know, I'm extra. Um, so yeah, this got me a Yarno square for a sweater. And then I wore it to a couple of thrift stores because I was trying to get some more clothes for my trip. And somebody was like, oh, did you crochet that? And I was like, I did. And I got a, a lot of attention for um, the day. So that was fun, you know, to get recognized. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to say about the sweater. Um, or if anybody has any questions about the construction. I mean, the, the pattern is free, so you can easily read it and decide if you want to make it. Um, I guess I would rate it. Mm, like intermediate for crochet. It's definitely not a beginner, like you're not your first crochet project, but this is, like I said, it's only my third crochet project. And I never, I never got to the point where I was like frustrated and wanted to give up. There were points where I was like, I don't understand what I'm supposed to be doing, but I figured it out and never lost my cool. So I would, I would recommend it's, and it's, it was really, I really love the finishing of the knit ribbing, which I think is why this pattern is popular. Um, a lot of crochet cardigans do not have that. And so it, it just gives it a more finished look, looks more um, store-bought, in my opinion. Um, and I love, and the, the ladies at the yarn store agreed that the diagonal design of the granny squares kind of gives it something a little unique versus if you just had a granny square cardigan that's all squares. So let me know if you have any questions or if I forgot anything and I will answer them. <laughs> so next up I have my only work in pro well, well yeah my only work in progress. This is my scarf number four and this is a neck scarf that I am knitting for my mom for Mother's Day. I don't know what side I'm supposed to be holding here. So this is the right side, says the needle there. Um, so there's the point. I have cats, so. Is there hair on it? Yeah, there's always hair everywhere. So yeah, I'm uh, more than halfway done. I'd like to finish this by Sunday so that I could leave it to her for Mother's Day because I will be gone Mother's Day. Um, but I really need to make some time to do that because I've got three days left. I think I can, I don't know. <laughs> I think I can, if I can make some time for myself here. I am trying to knit this. Like I didn't really follow the pattern when it came to how long to knit it. I knit it until I, I pre-weighed this and then knit it until I had a little bit more than half and then started decreasing. Um, it's kind of like the Sophie scarf, like you could knit as far as you want and then decrease so that you can use up all the yarn that you have. And I think it's a good length to wear you know, you can wrap it around and you have a nice little, it's cute. <laughs> yeah. So this yarn is Walcott Origin. Okay. I just checked, double checked and it's Walcott Opus is the alpaca blend version of their yarn. So. I hope one day I have enough footage of me saying I live on a really busy street where I can like compile it together. But yeah, I live on a really busy street. <laughs> so that is my work in progress. I, yeah, that's my only work in progress. I'm just like trying to justify if my next one's a work in progress because I need a swatch, but I don't think so. So my acquisitions are what I have next and my acquisitions 
are actually what I am planning to bring on my trip to Italy. I kind of struggled with coming up with what I wanted to bring and what I could bring on the plane. I did my research about my airline to see if I was allowed to bring knitting needles and they don't exclusively say that you can't, but there is still a chance that, I mean, that they'll take them for me. That'll be stressful. I'm bringing two different projects. Originally, I wanted to bring a pair of socks. Originally, I'm still bringing a pair of socks, I think, uh, 100%. For sure, the other project. And then I also was thinking about bringing a baby knit for a friend because, you know, it's small and I can bring it on the plane. My idea was if I brought fingering weight yarn that it would take longer to knit and it would take up less space, but I didn't end up doing that. <laughs> so let's just, let's just get into what I have here. So my first project that I am going to bring is the Vacation Vest by Park Williams. And that is a vest, um, like a summer vest with a couple of clasps that is cropped, it's sleeveless, and it just, I was inspired to knit this because I went to Madewell to buy some crop top, like tank tops for my trip. And they had a knitted vest that was similar to this in style and I tried it on and I loved it. And I was like, I love this. And it was $55, but it was polyester or acrylic blend of something. And I was like, I can make it. And I know I can't, and I know the pattern. So I went to my local yarn store and picked up some Baroku Pima. And I have my little gauge swatch here. So here's my gauge swatch. Um, this is a four by four knit up on size eight needles in the Pima Baroku yarn. Let me get out of your face here, but refocus. You got it there? I hope the rest of this video is in focus. I got a new phone and apparently it's hard to focus. Um, so yeah, I have two skeins of this, which was kind of stressful for the amount of yarn that I want to bring because, you know, these are fat cakes. So this is the Baroku Pima 100. I actually crocheted the Seabreeze tank with this. So I have worked with this yarn before and I really like it. Um, as far as the color choices, I, I, I went for the same color that I made the other <laughs> top in because it's just my favorite color for tops. Um, so, I mean, this this is the perfect vacation vest and I thought it would be cool to knit it because I think I could finish it while I'm there and then I will have it to to wear. So I, I gathered all my supplies and I am holding that in a brand new Q bag that I also picked up at my yokel, my yokel, <laughs> my yokel, <laughs> my local yarn store. And it actually came in a pack of two. So it comes in an extra large and a large. And these were $35 for the pair, which when I originally saw these, I thought it was $35 for one of them. And I was just going to get this one. And so I thought this would be 35 and this would be 25. And then I found out it was 35 for both. And I was like, glorious day. <laughs> now I have two. Uh, so these are like mesh. So I really like this for traveling because, you know, you get a carry on, a check in and a personal item but I don't want my personal item to be a project bag. And these I can shove into bags, but I don't, I don't know. I just thought that this would work perfectly as a bag that you can like shove into another bag that's really lightweight and really low profile, um, but that will protect my project rather than just throwing my project in my personal, personal item bag. So that's my tangent about the Delacue mesh bags. And yeah, I really like them. So, and I have my, what am I bringing with me on the plane? I have a little measuring tape that I just bought on Amazon because I realized I didn't have one. And then I have these, which I brought these on a, brought these on a plane before and they didn't take them from me. I think you have like a certain amount of inches that it can't be, but I mean, if they take this from me, it wouldn't be the end of the world. And then I'm bringing my knitting needles. I have two, a size seven and a size eight for this pattern called for. And I think I'm going to unscrew them and like put them in the bag so that they're less likely to take them. I don't know how that works because the airline that I am flying into, it says 
that it's not specifically not allowed, but then like, I know that LAX allows them and like American Airlines do. So how do they, do they check? When do they check? I don't know. I've only flown once in the last 10 years. So <laughs> I'm not very, um, I'm not very uh, experienced with flying. I did fly a lot as a kid, but as an adult, I haven't done much flying, so I don't really know. And then I have a little uh, tin. I, I keep tins so that I can keep uh, notions in them for project bags because I like to keep like one of each notion in each project bag. I'm sure you're loving that noise. So, so that's my first project that I'm bringing. This one I'm for sure bringing. My second backup project because I, I mean this is worsted weight. This shouldn't take a ton of time to knit and I don't know how much time I'm gonna have to knit. Obviously plain knitting. We are taking a red eye so I do want to try to sleep as much as possible that way I have less time to be in a state of anxiety which I am throughout the flight. Um, I listen to my headphones and knit and that really helps me get through the flight but if there's any amount of turbulence my heart rate goes up. <laughs> Uh, which I know, I know the jello theory. I know, I know that it's okay, but I just, I can't, I can't control where my body is at. Um, and I actually have been trying to meditate, but my anxiety has been kind of too high to meditate. Like it's, it's so frustrating to try to do. Where did I get off on the tangent of my anxiety? Um, I'm someone who is pretty naturally anxious. I'm just a chihuahua <laughs> where I get anxious and I'm, I, yeah, I, 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 sometimes I do this thing where I like micro shake where like no one can tell when I'm like slightly shaking because I'm anxious. Um, I'm aware that I sound a little unhinged right now, but I mean, I feel like a lot of people have anxiety problems. I haven't been like diagnosed with anxiety disorder or anything. Even my therapist was unsure, but she was like, you definitely have social anxiety, but I don't know if I'd go as far as say you have an anxiety disorder. But I do want to meditate as a natural way to kind of combat that, which I did try. I had a 30 day trial and I made it five days in and then gave up because I was so frustrated with how hard it was when you're anxious, which I know is the point, but I just seem to get better at it and I need to practice. <laughs> On that depressing note, my next project, which I'm not 100% I'm going to bring only because I need to decide if I'm comfortable knitting on nine inch circulars, these little bad boys. So I bought this set of yarn um, at a local like pop-up market in here in the town that I live in, which is, it's random, but there was yarn there. There was a lady who had a booth and she was selling hand dyed yarn. And that is um, Lace Wing Fiber Co. I don't know if she's still around, but if she is, I will link something. I have no idea. I bought this, I want to say two years ago, and it's just been in my stash because I was like, I'm going to knit a pair of socks, and then I, I never got around to it. So I have the Vanilla Socks by the Crazy Sock Lady pattern, four nine-inch circulars that I downloaded a bot and I would like to cast these on and see if I can even handle knitting on these like if they hurt if I can do it um, and if I can then I'll need to decide because for the toe I still either need the same needle um, for magic loop like a lot a really long one or I need to get DPNs I'm always afraid I'm going to say depends <laughs> I need to make sure I'm saying it right. Or I need to go get DPNs in the same size, which is a size one. So that is kind of what makes me nervous because I'm like, are they going to take DPNs away from me on the flight? I, I want to get wood ones and then just stick them in my bag and pray for the best. So that is my second. That is my second uh, project that I plan to bring on me. And that's all that I pr plan to bring. Um, I hope to buy yarn out there to bring home. I don't know where yet, but I hope to. And then if I miraculously finish both of these and I need to get a project for the plane home, I can try to like get another uh, skein in Florence because we fly out of Florence. Um, I know there's yarn stories there, so I can do that and try to get myself a project for the flight home. I, I mean, I really love reading, but being on a plane and trying to read is hard. It's, it's really best for me if I can figure out a way to like 
distract myself on all fronts. So something visual, something with my hands and then something audible is usually what does the trick. So um, if you've got any book recommendations, my idea was to just maybe reread some books that I already know that I love just because I haven't really been able to focus on anything new lately. So <laughs> that's my plan. <laughs> what did I not talk about? So my last um, acquisition is not really anything to do, well, I don't know, with yarn, but it's kind of fiber related. So I, I really like this company called Quince. It's just quince.com where they sell all sorts of clothes and home goods. And I don't know if it's like knockoffs or what you would call it, but they just sell um, products for like way reasonable prices. So this was a sweater that I ordered for my trip because I wanted a cardigan that was warm, but super lightweight so that it wouldn't take up a lot of space in my bag. And I don't think I'm gonna need a lot of warm wear because it's summer, but you know, this doesn't take up a lot of room and it's not going to, I, I still think I could wear it. And then if I needed to layer up, if it, if it was cold or if we end up going more north than I think we are, um, I can layer some of the long sleeves that I have as well. Or if it's cold at night, <laughs> which I don't think it's going to be. I mean, it's it's still spring, so you know I don't know. But so this is 100% cashmere. Um, it is it, it was 120 dollars. So that is not that 100% cashmere. That's not bad. It's it's not bad. So I I don't actually own a lot of knit garments, and they're bulky, you know. So I we're traveling for so long we really have to be mindful of like what we're bringing and so i had to bring a lot of things kind of like a capsule wardrobe thing so I, I laid out all my clothes and made sure i can make a bunch of outfits out of them and i'm actually pretty proud of myself i feel like i did really good on not overpacking. but the essential part of that was to layer and to capsule wardrobe um i, I want to say like 80 percent of what i'm bringing is new I haven't bought clothes for myself in a long time. I want to say since, I don't know, at least two years, I kind of stopped buying clothes because I used to buy clothes more often. I started getting rid of a lot of the clothes that I own like on Poshmark because I kind of wanted to make the switch of buying clothes that were not fast fashion and not made out of, or I want to, I want to move towards only buying things that are natural and materials. So I just kind of stopped buying clothes because I had enough and then I kind of dwindled through and I don't have a lot of summery clothes. Well, I don't know. I have a lot of work clothes because I work a lot. So I have a lot of like sweats and things that get dirty. So I, I did buy some things for this trip. And I also bought a linen set to wear out there from Quince as well. That was very reasonably priced. I want to say the pants were like $39 for linen pants, 100% linen pants. I had also tried to buy some from Anthro. Apology, anthropology, and they were like $130 and they were not 100% linen. So Quince is the way to go. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share that sweater because it's a sweater and we're knitters and we like sweaters. And sometimes it's okay to buy sweaters <laughs> and it's, it's really nice. It fits really nice. Um, it's cropped. It's, if I knit this and this is how it came out, came out, I would be absolutely thrilled. So it's like, why? punish myself and be like, oh, you can knit that. Well, it's like, number one, I don't think I could knit this for $120. Um, and like the gauge, I mean, I'm not good at that, but this is machine made. So it's like, you're never going to get something this uh, fine of a gauge. So it's, it's nice because it's, it's lightweight again. I already said that. <laughs> um, let me see how I did it on my list here. Okay, well, I, I have talked about everything that I wanted to talk about. I just wanted to say thanks for everyone who's been watching my YouTube and subscribing. I'm really enjoying this process. I feel like every time I make a video, I get better. And that's like rewarding to me um, is when you can see that you're improving in editing and in, in, I don't know, in everything. I just kind of feel like things are clicking. Um, <laughs> I don't love watching my own videos because you have to watch them when you edit them and before you post them and you know you're just like oh my god you realize the mistakes and and um you know the problems that you have 
but it is it's like a learning experience so like right now i can tell i'm not looking at the camera enough but it's, it's hard for me to do that it's a lot easier for me to talk to myself when i flip the camera around um but then when i watch those videos it's also distracting because i'm like looking off into wherever um but i i don't know why it's like i need to put like a smiley face on my um sorry a skateboarder just drove by just drove a skateboarder just skated by I need to put like a smiley face on my camera or something so I remember to look at it. Cause I don't know why when I just look at the cameras, I catch myself like looking away cause it just feels weird to just stare at them. Um, but I did, I, I, when I was watching or editing my last video, the 12 cabled cardigans you should check out or whatever I called it. Um, you know, I was watching the video. I'm like, Oh my God, I didn't, I didn't even like tell them like how it was constructed. So I edited like little kind of sound bites that, that um, corrected my mistakes. But I feel like the next time I go to sit down one of those videos, it'll get better because I've done it before. So I guess where I'm going on this tangent of YouTube is that I am enjoying doing it and I feel like I'm getting better at it and I'm gonna keep doing it. So when I get back, I will hopefully have a video to catch you guys up on the finished objects and I will hopefully be regularly posting, you know, once a week or maybe every other week because it's a lot easier to do every other week. So if you want to keep up with me, what is this? <laughs> Follow me on TikTok and Instagram to see kind of more daily content. I am Knit Cheek on both. Uh, subscribe if you want to see adventures for my trip that I will hopefully upload on my shorts. Or if I don't, definitely check out TikTok. And I'm more likely to, to TikTok than I am to Instagram. But check those out. And then if you want to subscribe and comment and like this video, that's cool too. Um, it'd be cool to come home and, you know, see that I missed out on people watching my videos and commenting and have stuff to read when I get home. So, well, thanks for tuning in on this week's episode of Knit Cheek. And did I introduce myself this time? I think I did. I think I did. But um, if I didn't, I'm Natalie. I'm the cheek behind it cheek. <laughs> um, yeah, so <laughs> bye everyone. Thank you. Chocolate.